then we got into a heated argument with my mom and then she said like um oh wow all of your siblings were planned for except you so you are my mistake uh, and i regret giving birth to you so that stuck with me forever so um it really did something like internally my family is like some of my uncles and aunties they used to call and say that you know you are very stupid and most of the times whenever you make something small an error at home or if I drop something, they will call me, why are you so clumsy? Why do you behave like a girl? You know, all those kind of negative downgrading words. Cross the line, if you've ever been, if someone has ever said a very tribalism word or being racist to you or judge you because of your height, your body size, or your looks, or your face, or your lips, your hair, your nails, everything about your body. According to the World Health Organization, 1 billion children aged 2 to 17 years have experienced physical, sexual, emotional violence or neglect in 2019. My name is Pedro Kapirika. I'm the national coordinator of the children's movement in Namibia. So I usually offer um, project um, trainings and then also counseling to the youth and then plus um, students from high schools. Pedro is also a counselor at Jacob Marengo Secondary School. He explains to us what emotional abuse is. Emotional abuse, in my own understanding, is when you have to say to your child or to another learner or to anybody, one is, let me, body shaming, for example, that's the first thing. When you body shame somebody and say you are tall and thin or you are tall and, and I mean, you are tall and fat, um, you compare the person and say, no, you're fat like a hippo. And then that person will have that image of looking at themselves like, oh, you are huge like a hippo itself. And then some people would prefer and say, no, you are tall like a giraffe. And then you look at the giraffe and you see the neck and the long legs. You know, it breaks your self-esteem in a bad way. You, you compare yourself to that animal. And, and then also at home, whereby parents would call their own kids like, why do you behave in such manner? Are you stupid? And it sits in your mind, you end up believing in yourself that yes, I am stupid, I am not clever. And you start doubting yourself and by not doing anything because it is now the system that you believe in. And that is the abuse that we go into. And people would say, no, I was just joking. But it's not a joke because it breaks the next person. And then also in our society, you can't able to go out and express yourself and say, the words that you just say to me, it's really breaking me down slowly but surely. You calling, uh, maybe for example, you, you, you inform a young lady and say, no, your breast or your, your size is too big. And then it breaks that person down. And then whenever they go into the shop, they will think, how do I buy a certain top for myself? It just lowers a person's self um, standards. Cross the line if you've ever felt insecure about yourself. A 21-year-old woman has recollected her upbringing and how she has experienced emotional abuse from her own family. Um, so, um, thinking of it now, I really don't think she was aware that she was emotionally abusing me because I feel like um, our parents uh, were raised up in a very toxic environment in a generation where they couldn't answer back to their parents and where they couldn't say anything, you see. So this, um, they carried on, you see, with this emotions, you know, and they thought it was normal to them, you see. So when, now they're doing it to our generation, our generation is more educated and our generation um, has more emotions than they did. Um, so I personally feel like they are not aware of what they do because um, even when a child, um, 
a child does something wrong, you see. And then uh, parents turn to say stuff and then they'll be like, yes, you guys are even lucky right now because we used to get uh, physically beat up, you see. So like, it's like I don't feel uh, like they know what they're doing. I feel like um, it's just whereby they also personally feel like they didn't heal from the trauma of their childhoods because it's not even recognized as trauma. It's just recognized as upbringing, you see. I was brought up this way, so I'm going to bring up my children this way. So they carry on their generation trauma to us. And uh, we being more advantaged, um, like we even start with life skills uh, in this thing, so we get to know more of how we should feel or this is right this is wrong and they really didn't get that privilege so i feel is like it's most uh, it's a parent thing i think um they really don't know that they're doing that because it was done unto them and they don't find it wrong so that is their norm but for us however it's different because now we are taught to express ourselves you are taught to um speak up when you feel like something is wrong we are taught just to basically be us and that how it's not the way how they were raised. They were told to obey. They were told to listen to their parents. You see, we are told to like speak up, even if your parent is wrong, correct them, you see. A research published by Healthline has concluded that emotional abuse has long-term effects on victims such as social withdrawal, guilt, loneliness, insomnia, amongst many. Yes, it actually did affect me in a very negative way. Because um, growing up as a child, I was very open. Like, I would never fall out of emotions. So I would always speak my mind or what I feel. And then, um, like, growing up or, like, uh, experiencing this now, you tend to be more shut. Like, you shut down. You really don't say what you feel or how you feel. And you just, like, let everything slide. So, like, you really don't pay that much attention to it. And sometimes it's to the point where you just bottle up really toxic emotions and um, it leads to depression. Like um, for me, basically, when I realized I could not even like talk to my mom or talk to a friend or anybody else, I really started bottling up emotions and it became a lifestyle. I'm not used to really expressing my feelings. So I remember I have a, a, a friend that like of eight years. Um, so. I am only starting to open up recently. So she's always been saying, I know there's so much that you're hiding or like there's so much you're not saying, but it's not because I don't want to say it. It's because when I did at a younger stage, I was turned down and I was like told you're being silly, you see. So this thing really does have a negative impact even in terms of socializing. That also sort of affected our friendship because she feels like it was a one-sided friendship, but it was not actually a one-sided friendship because I just really never learned how to, you know, like be open or like deal with my feelings because um, the way how I was like brought up is just like shut it down, like let it slide, like forget about it. So. Now, um, recently, so we just started talking and communicating and like slowly but surely I'm opening up. So let's say socially, uh, it did have an effect. I used to, I used to be a bully at school, at Agustinum Secondary School. I went through a lot of emotional um, abuse um, from friends and families and I I channeled the same energy into the other young people at school, especially if somebody used to call me like, oh, you are tall, you are thin. From there, I was introduced into an NGO called Peace Centre. And Peace Centre was specialised in trauma counselling and then they introduced me into a programme called Alternative to Violence Project. So I attended that programme and the programme they taught us, they had lessons of an I message, how you can express yourself. And I thought the program is about violence, but it's not about violence. It is more on focusing on to find yourself, your inner yourself, I mean your inner peace. And we did an exercise called I message, whereby you have to express yourself without you not blaming the next person. And I'm like, wow, it's where I'm able to identify what's wrong with me, what type of feelings do I feel. It's where I identify that my self-esteem was very low. And two, uh, it's where I also identified myself that, oh, okay, what I did, it was actually out of line. 
so it's where I thought of like that's the line path that I would love to go to to help others out. Target 16.2 of the 2030 Agenda for the Sustainable Development Goal is to end abuse, exploitation, trafficking and all forms of violence against and torture of children. My name is Petrina Ndapanda Matthews. I am a visual artist. I specialize in action painting, so I use my body to paint on canvases and tell stories or have conversations on topics that are regarded as uncomfortable, topics that we don't want to have, but topics that we need to have conversations on. Aiming to express her emotions and coping with her trauma, Petrina uses her body instead of a paintbrush to create art. My body is the closest thing to what I feel. Like, if I feel depressed, it's not a paintbrush that feels depressed, it's my body. So I feel it's the one that can best express how I feel. If I'm happy, it's my body that feels it. So that's why, because I just felt like, um, the paintbrush was not allowing me to go as fast much as I wanted. If I need a stroke, for example, the paintbrush won't allow me to do that, but my hands or my feet or my body would literally allow me to do it. That's how I came about using my feet because I wanted to dance in the paint because I wanted to express how I felt, but I, I felt like my feet, when you see them on the canvas, you see the dance that I was doing, the rhythm and all that. So it's for me, it's, even if I take steps or I celebrate something, if I run to you to give you a hug while I'm happy, for example, it's my feet that I use. So that's how I came about to use my feet. Honestly, I don't think if it, it wasn't for this, my paintings, I would have been this far probably would have been dead by now um, and I say this because of mental health firstly and everything emotion starts with your mental health I I've been at a point where I myself was either suicidal I was in depression and you know when people use words to sort of make you feel a certain way and you get people who treat you who sort of are there physically, but they're not there emotionally for you. And it becomes a thing of using everything against you, literally. Um, painting helped me because when I get on a canvas, my hope is that whatever that I don't want inside of me, I should have left it on that canvas by the time I walk away. My hope and vision is that when I'm done painting, every tear that I wanted to drop, I would have dropped it on that canvas. Every scream I wanted to do, I would have done it on that canvas. So for me, it helped me to deal with um, a lot of mental health issues. And it also just helped me to refocus and bring back the energy that I want. Because it's on that canvas that I get to dance again. It's on that canvas that you just release energy that is not yours, emotions that you don't want inside of you. And when I look back, I see that which I've, I've gone through, but it's no longer part of me. So it has been therapy for me. Like, it's a conversation that I literally have on that thing. And I'm so blessed that I can get to share it with other people. I get to have sessions with other people that they can come here and we can have a conversation. But that the conversation is not just words that we're exchanging and that's it. But a conversation is paint that we put on a canvas that helps this person to release however they feel. And if um, for me to also be compassionate and feel with them, relate with them, hold space for them. But at the end of the day that when we are done having that conversation, both in words and on canvas with painting, they, they live free, they live liberated, and they live knowing that I've had a conversation that is not at the usual that one that I usually have, but it left me free. It left me a new person. It left me that I've released 
that which I felt and I didn't want. And if it's joy, I've shared it with somebody i've shared it with paint and when you see it on a canvas somebody else can share in that moment which you have so also it doesn't limit our conversations to just this room but it also goes beyond cross the line if you know of someone has ever committed suicide or you yourself maybe have thought of those feelings of any I would really uh, wish and pray that everybody should find a platform where they, they can express themselves, not to be the worst of the worst of the bullies. Yeah. Please, anybody who's listening now and you feel like you're going through so much and you can't handle it and you can't speak to people who are close to you, there are health, uh, what helplines that you can reach out to, you can book um, a face-to-face -face talk with a person totally for free like Childline Lifeline is one of the things that where you can go to and basically um, I was given advice a, a weird one probably just approaches stranger and say can I talk to you because not a lot of people feel comfortable speaking to people they know so maybe a stranger will do like so just speak to somebody guys before you do anything just speak